What's up guys, it's Coach Jay coming at you from Team MK Fitness and today we're going to be talking about knee care and injury prevention. So a quick rundown of what we're going to cover, we're going to look at the body at a global level to see how that's going to affect the knee itself, then we're going to dial in locally and see what's happening at the knee, we're going to talk about contraindications or things not to do, and then we're going to discuss practical takeaways, some examples of exercises and strategies that you can do to start integrating into your programming uh, to keep this in mind. So starting off looking at the body in its entirety, uh, looking at the global level, we're going to look at mobility versus stability. So every joint is meant to have a certain amount of mobility and stability. The question is how much, right? Uh, some parts of the body are meant to be more mobile while others are meant to be more stable. So quickly I'm going to show you what are meant to be the mo more mobile uh, segments of the body. So we're going to start all the way down to the foot looking at the great toe, the big toe, and the arch. We want that to be nice and mobile, okay? And then uh, working our way up, you know, we're going to skip the heel looking at the ankle. We want the ankle to be nice and mobile. Traveling up, okay? So again, we have mobile ankles. From there, we want a mobile hip. Then looking up to the thoracic spine, upper back, okay? The shoulder joint, we want nice and mobile, right? And of course the wrist, okay? Now you're gonna notice a pattern here in a moment. Now the more stable segments, starting again back to the foot, we want the heel to be nice and stable, so the heel and the bones involved with that. We want them to stack up, be nice and stable. Going up, looking at the knee itself, what we're talking about today, we want that to be nice and stable. The core and lumbar spine, we want nice and stable. Up here, it's hard to see, but you have your scapula, that bone on the back of your rib cage. Uh, it, can, it helps control the shoulder joint itself, we want that nice and stable. And then the elbow, we want nice and stable. So the reason that we're talking about this, guys, is a lot of times if we have an issue at a joint, it's because something one level above or one level below isn't doing its job. So we're gonna look at the ankle and hip specifically today. And we're gonna come back to that. So looking at the local level now, we're gonna dial into the knee itself. Two main muscles I wanna call attention to, the VMO and the hamstring. So most people know what hamstrings are, they're in the back of the leg. The VMO, okay, it's a part of the quads. Looking here, okay, if this is my right leg, it's that, that teardrop looking inside quad towards the bottom of that. It helps a lot with control of the kneecap and it works together with the hamstring to uh, control the movement of that joint capsule. So we wanna make sure that that muscle is doing its job and we wanna make sure that the hamstrings are uh, doing their job and that they're strong enough to keep that control. Contraindications, things not to do. Uh, so I'm talking to anybody that's had an ACL repair or a meniscus tear. For uh, anyone that's had a, an ACL repair, so the ACL provides roughly 80% of the knee stability, which is why it's so important that if something happens to your ACL that you get it taken care of, right? Whenever they repair that, a lot of times they'll use a uh, cadaver ligament or they'll use a tendon, which tend not to be as strong. With that being said, one thing we probably want to avoid, unless your doctor says otherwise, is what we call open chain knee extension. That's a big term. What does that mean? So anytime my foot is in contact with the ground, that's closed chain. Anytime my foot is off the ground, that's open chain. So that nice leg extension you do, I know you get a nice good quad pump, but that could potentially uh, mess up that repair that they did prior to because of the way it can overstretch that repair part. Um, so something to keep in mind there. Any sort of close chain, like controlled squatting, things of that nature, should be okay. For a meniscus tear, so guys, we haven't figured out really a good way to repair the meniscus. Uh, so a lot of times when they go in to repair that tear, they're just kind of cleaning up the damage to prevent more pain and try to prevent more wear. After you get through that meniscus, you get to cartilage. Once you get through cartilage, you get bone on bone. 
So with that, we want to make sure that we're not doing super high impact stuff. Uh, and that way, maybe we can put off, maybe put off knee surgery an extra 20 years. You know, that's a, a really good case scenario. So just things to keep in mind when conducting your training, if you've had that happen before. Uh, so some practical, pra practi practical, practical exercises that you can take away uh, and some things to keep in mind with mobilization. So given everything that we've talked about so far, we want to make sure that we are strengthening the hamstrings. Okay, You can do that through any sort of hinging motion, any machine work, anything uh, to help strengthen those hamstrings. The hip and glutes, I threw them together. We want the hip and glutes not only uh, mobile, but we want them strong throughout that range of motion. So doing exercises, these are just examples, glute bridging, any sort of clamshells, any sort of band work typically addresses that. Uh, a side leg raise, anything to work those muscles on the side of the hip for that control, that's all good stuff. For the VMO activation, TKE, that's a terminal knee extension. Uh, so the way that looks, you'd anchor a band to something, have it go around your knee and focus just on extending at the hip and locking that knee and activating that VMO. Really good exercise for integrating the VMO and hamstrings together so that they're working in unison. Um, and then going back to ankle mobilization, you can do foam rolling, you can do static stretching of the calves, uh, even if you do calf raises the right way, really making sure that you get a nice good stretch at the bottom of that exercise, another good way to help strengthen and mobilize the ankles. So guys, I hope this gives you some insight as to how to address if you've had any sort of persisting pain uh, or you just want to make sure that you have healthy knees long term. If you have any questions about this guys, please come see myself or another staff member. If you have persisting pain, this stuff isn't working, please go see your doctor for more guidance if it, uh, it may be uh, a greater injury and you might need medical intervention. But guys, thank you so much. I hope this helps you. See you next time.